So as you may have realised by now, I do love a good boot fair, especially when it comes to picking up some classic retro games for a bargain price. And I recently did that, well recently, it was quite a while ago, I just haven't had a chance to do this video until now. I checked out a, uh, the Epsom car boot sale, which is where I regularly go to, and I found a few little bits of bargains here that I think you'll like, so why not check out what I got? Now Burnout is probably one of my favourite series of all time, especially in terms of arcade races. But the thing is, although Burnout Paradise is one of my most favourite games of all time, I never actually played the first two Burnout games. So when I saw a GameCube copy of the original Burnout at a boot sale, I thought, well, let's give it a go and see how far the uh, the series has come from, uh, from its uh, humble beginnings. And the humble beginnings is probably the best way to describe it. The original Burnout is very, very simplistic in terms of what would come later. Not so much in terms of crashing, definitely a lot to do with um, driving dangerously, lots of near misses, drifting and whatnot in a sort of very strict arcade racer format. And it's as stripped down and basic as old school arcade racers get. You load up the game, you go into the championship, you, uh, you pick from a selection of vehicles uh, which give different handlings or different uh, difficulties, and then you pick whether you want manual or automatic transmission, and then the track, and then away you go, you're racing. Um, and as any racing game, you just basically have to get to first place. Um, you have uh, a time limit in which to do that, uh, you go past checkpoints to increase your time. It's it's an arcade racer, what more can you say about that really? If you've played any arcade racing game from OutRun to Daytona, you pretty much know what to expect. Uh, and it's interesting that a, a game that came out as late as this, you know, this is what, early 2000s, um, still kind of carries a lot of that very traditional 80s to early 90s arcade gameplay. Uh, and from that perspective, it works relatively well. It's definitely lacking the polish um, that is was definitely there from later Burnout games. I mean, the later Burnout games are incredibly polished, incredibly slick, um, but you can tell the basics are something very, very special here. Um, I must admit, it's okay. I, I've, I've had a little bit of time with it. It's not, oh, clearly not my you know, my favourite Burnout game, clearly not my favourite racer, but for what it does, it does very, very well. Um, it's probably a little bit too simplistic for my tastes, um, even as an arcade racer, um, but it's something very enjoyable, and if you like Burnout, uh, it might be an idea just to give this a go, just to um, just to kind of see where it all ha started. So let's talk money. I bought a boxed GameCube version of the game with a manual in relatively good condition considering I bought that for £3. Now on eBay kind of prices vary and I've seen mostly around the £4 mark for a buy it now a copy in similar condition so really I saved about £1 for a very good arcade racer. So after GoldenEye 007 on the N64, who wouldn't want a piece of the uh, 007 Bond shooter action? Well, Electronic Arts certainly did because they released a ton of James Bond related uh, film licenses after the success of GoldenEye and will continue to do so for many years. And I picked up one of these many, many years ago, the 007 Nightfire, um, for the GameCube when it first came out all those years ago. And at the time, I quite liked it. It was a, a pleasant mix of, uh, of, of Bond first person shooting a little bit more depth um, when compared to the original 007 GoldenEye game uh, and it's also some added um, bonus areas such as driving sequences which is very odd um, but actually makes a lot of sense considering how much um, that James Bond is as known for his cars as he is for his guns and shooting and as it happens I have relatively fond memories of this game when it came out so when I saw it in a boot sale I thought well let's give that a go because I really fancied playing um, one of the non GoldenEye 007 Bond games um, and this one is pretty good. I mean, the driving sequences are basically need for speed. Um, so they're quite a little fun. They've got little gadgets in and things like that. And then you've got the shooting scenes, which are, which are okay. They're not too bad. Um, you know, not, don't, not quite as good as uh, 007 in terms of how memorable they are. Um, but they definitely try and do something a little bit different. There's a big focus on trying, trying to do things just like Bond would. And in fact, you're even rewarded for doing so, um, which is quite cool. Things such as, um, you know, turning off uh, security for sneaking around places and, and all sorts of things like that. So there's a bit more. This is more than just a GoldenEye 007 clone. It tries to be its own movie. You know, it's very slick. It's, it's from Electronic Arts. You know how polished it's going to be. All sorts of different cutscenes. I mean, there's even a, a proper opening James Bond. Uh, Bond theme, uh, which is okay, and complete with the, the typical movie style opening. So they, they, they pretty much know how to make a, a game look like it should be straight from a Bond film, and it does a very good job here. Um, but Nightfire, it's again,
again, it's it's another interesting kind of a release really that I picked up. Um, it, I had quite a lot of fun playing this. I think it's something I'm going to play a lot more um, when I get a chance to. Um, but yeah, I'm quite pleased that I picked up this game for the price I got it and that price was again £3 um, for a box edition with instructions not the best quality um, version I, I, yeah, I've seen but you know I tend to just worry about the games for these things as long as the game works I'm mostly happy now on eBay I've seen a buy it now price for around £4.79 including postage so I've saved about £1.79 and I'm more than happy with that Last up is a relatively odd choice. Uh, now we've been, uh, me and my wife have been doing a lot of boot sales recently and one game that she did find uh, months and months ago was uh, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights uh, for the PlayStation 2 and she kind of liked the idea of it and um, wanted to give it a go but for one reason or another we just didn't get around to picking it up. So we saw it again uh, more recently and decided well just to give it a little go and pick it up and just to see what kind of game it is. And safe to say it's not your usual like lazy licensed platformer game there's a bit more to it than that i'm actually surprised at how authentic to the tv show experience this game actually is uh, they've got all sorts of um, you know all, a lot of it's all voiced they've got lots of the music you expect to hear from scooby-doo style things they've got the quote-unquote humor from the straight from the cartoon so it does feel like you're playing an episode of the cartoon and i think that's the best thing you can do um, with a cartoon licensed game is just to make it feel like you're experiencing an episode for yourself and actually making the choices. Um, it is sort of like a platform game, kind of 3D platformer, very linear in that respect. However, there's more of a sort of puzzling exploration adventure going on in that you're actually exploring a haunted house and its surrounding areas. It's suitably creepy uh, Scooby-Doo locales such as uh, abandoned docks and, and the like. And you know what? It's actually relatively decent. Not exactly the greatest game in the world ever, but um, as I say, it could have been a really lazy platform game with no thought put into it, no effort. Um, but it seems like they've actually put a hell of a lot of effort, and I really do appreciate that. It's, it's something you know, that you can't really un undersell is the quality of a really good um, licensed game that just sort of knows what it wants to deliver and just delivers upon it. And it's, it's a good bit of fun, actually. It's, um, it, as I said, it feels like the cartoon, in, although I never really like the cartoon growing up I can kind of appreciate uh, it a little bit more now a bit older um, but yeah pretty good game actually um, worth checking out if you fancy something a little bit different a little bit offbeat on your PlayStation 2 and I picked up this game again box with manual for about three pounds again and on eBay it's selling for around three pound 26 buy it now price with um, with shipping so I've saved only about 26p but you know I'll take a little saving if necessary so how do we do? Well, I spent £9, which is a good value to spend on, on three games in particular, and I would have paid on eBay a total of around £12.5p for all three of those games. So as you can see, I have saved £3.5p in total in buying it from a car boot sale. Not a major saving, I've probably done better in the past, but you know, these are three pretty decent games and they're enjoyable enough for the amount I paid for them. So that was my most recent car boot pickups. Thank you very much for watching this video. As always, you can subscribe to us via the lovely red button below that says subscribe. And until next time, keep gaming positive.